More reaction to the growing calls for New York governor to step down. Let's welcome in Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, a Republican from New York. She's also the assistant whip of the House GOP conference. Congresswoman, good morning. As we watched together yesterday, Governor Cuomo quickly denied the allegations against him, uh, blaming his alleged behavior on misunderstandings and even his cultural background. Let's listen to what he had to say and then I'll get your reaction. I've been making the same gesture in public all my life. I actually learned it from my mother and from my father. It is meant to convey warmth, nothing more. And after playing other slideshows as well and hearing his remarks and knowing President Biden, other top Democrats say he should resign, do you, Congresswoman, think the governor will step down? Well, I, I, you know, I was on your show not too long ago when I said that the governor was going to go, whether it be by resignation or criminal conviction or whether it be by impeachment or uh, perhaps uh, it could even be at the ballot box next year. I do believe that at this point it will be uh, by resignation or impeachment. You know, I was a state legislator before coming uh, to Washington to serve in Congress, and many of my colleagues from the other side of the aisle have told me that they have the votes to impeach him in the state legislature. And so I think it's only a matter of time right now. But it really is shocking the, the great lengths that Governor Cuomo is going, even after these independent investigators uh, went through about 74,000 pieces of documentation, of text messages, of emails. They've interviewed uh, around 150 people, very close to the governor, uh, whether they be state troopers, whether they be individuals who worked in his administration or the women themselves. And I mean, these are these are serious allocations that have been confirmed by these independent investigators. And it's time for the governor to go. I had called for his resignation when it was the nursing home scandal because he had mishandled the nursing home to the point where there were 15,000 deaths, far greater number than would have been had he used the alternative sites that he had set up himself, the U.S. Navy comfort ship that President Trump had sent in, the Javits Center, that in itself was reason for the governor to resign. This only exacerbates the reasons why the governor needs to go. And those who agree with me should go to enoughcuomo.com. Enoughcuomo.com, add your name. I have tens of thousands of people who are adding their name because they've had enough of the governor and his betrayal uh, and his, his denial here, where it's quite obvious that he's done the wrong thing. And there are many scandals uh, plaguing his current administration. Uh, of course, we heard from the New York Attorney General yesterday as she presented the evidence uh, surrounding her investigation, but she stopped short of any sort of legal proceedings following that announcement. Were you satisfied with the report? Do you believe that uh, the governor should face some legal challenges? Well, we do know that the Albany District Attorney is looking into it, and it was quite clear that the governor, uh, it was the Attorney General's opinion, that the governor had violated state and federal laws. As a matter of fact, the governor himself put sexual harassment laws in place, and now he has violated them. And um, the governor was very quick to call for some of my colleagues in the state assembly, three assembly Democrats, since 2013, he has called to resign over sexual harassment accusations. That was even without an investigation taking place. And so, you know, the governor can't be above the law. He cannot have double standards when it comes to sexual harassment. And we all know that if this were corporate America, the person would be fired. If this were a Republican governor, that he would be calling for his resignation. And at this point, it's not political. We, we have, look, it's never been political. But the reality is now every single Democrat and Republican serving in federal office representing New York State, including the president of the United States, have called for the governor to resign. Three quarters of the state legislature have called for the governor to resign. So if he doesn't resign, I believe they will move forward with impeachment. And one way or another, uh, I think Governor Cuomo's time is limited. Let's talk about what's happening in New York City. We learned yesterday Mayor Bill de Blasio announcing his plans to mandate COVID vaccines for certain indoor activities. Take a listen to this. The only way to patronize these establishments indoors will be if you're vaccinated, at least one dose. The same for folks in terms of work. They'll need at least one dose. This is crucial because we know that this will encourage a lot more vaccination.
I know you responded to the mayor's decree on Twitter saying this, while I'm vaccinated and strongly urge others to become vaccinated, the government's role should be to provide the science so Americans can make informed decisions for themselves. These mandates and precluding citizens from taking part in everyday activities are unacceptable. Uh, clearly, uh, Representative, you are not in support of this effort from the mayor here. Uh, what can be done, do you envision, to prevent this from being uh, from taking place, again, requiring it to be so. And do you believe this could end up being enforced? Well, look, this is a government overreach. There's no doubt about it. Uh, people who are vaccinated are upset because they have to share their private information every single place they go. Uh, people who are not vaccinated are upset because they feel that like they're being precluded from uh, participating in everyday activities and being a part of society. And small business owners are upset because now they have to be the policing they have to do the policing for Mayor de Blasio. I mean, how is that putting that burden on small business owners who are already short-staffed, by the way, because of labor shortages created by President Biden and the Democrats paying more individuals to stay home than to report to work? So they're already dealing with massive labor shortages as it is, and now they have to go check everybody's vaccine card. They need to determine whether those uh, vaccine cards are authentic. Right. That is not the role of the small business owner. I have been speaking with some of my colleagues here in New York City who agree with my point of view. Uh, we've also consulted with attorneys to see if there's a way forward to provide a legal challenge. But this just sums it up. Welcome to New York, where you don't need an ID to vote, but you need a vaccine card to go eat lunch. It's, it, it, is, it is ridiculous, and it's un-American. We're going to continue to push back against this. All right. Really interesting point you make. There are a lot of news coming out of New York, and that's New York Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis weighing in on all of it. Congresswoman, thank you very much. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.